just start now. We'll just, yeah, just push it on there and you can... Yeah, you do. You working? A little red light's on. That's good. Does it say it's recording? All right, I'm going to tell you all the secrets. Sweet. <laughs> so how does the light, how does the light look? Oops. Good? All right, so I'm going to tell you all the secrets. First, you got to get your works right. So i got a big bag of chocolate bliss. That was the first thing I did do was use a blender. Oh, you just like mixed it up? Yeah. Mm, dude, wow. man. All right, so chocolate bliss, vanilla agave, and tacos. That's what I'm going to put in this batch. What's this stuff? That, man, that is a Holy really cool rice product. Rice. It's, so Tocos is a, it's a, a, a really high grade organic brown rice <clears throat> that's, um, they run it through this multi-stage enzyme process. First phase strips out all the sugars. Next they strip out all the carbs. And then they run it through another enzymatic process that flips the lipase switch off, the enzyme switch that digests the stuff, so that it changes from a two to three day shelf life to a two to three year shelf life. Right. I mean, it's, re it's one of the most high tech processes ever. And this is actually, I guess this is the third product we get from the US. So most everything we get from South America and Asia because the soil is so strong. Alright, so here, I'm, I'm, I'm letting all my secrets out now. So. Wow. So the first thing, if you can see inside this, this has got like a hunk of ice here. Yeah. So what I do is I start with Kangen water is what we're going to use. Kangen nine and a half water. And so I put like, you know, maybe a half a cup or cup of Kangen water in here and put it on its side like this and let it freeze. Because when you freeze water, it changes the entire structure of water. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it, it's very cool. So simple technology, freeze your water and, and unthaw it. Drink it. So... That's what I'm, this is what I'm going to put to our... Did you say unthaw it? Yeah, well, I mean... I, 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 I thought. I, I apologize. Please, Lord. Lord, so, forgive me. That ain't right. So after it... That ain't right. After it thaws, it still has that change. It keeps the structure for quite a while. Yeah. So the, what I'm going to use is, so here's your works, so a gallon jug that's number one or number three plastic. It'll have a, best is number one, it's in a little triangle on the bottom. If you use a skanky plastic like a milk jug, it will literally eat the plastic because the, the superfoods are so aggressive at detoxing. It'll actually break down the plastic. So you don't want to put it in a skanky milk jar. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> no, no, so. I love the use of all these professional terms. <laughs> <laughs> professional <All right>. jargon. <laughs> so first off, I'm gonna take. I'm gonna use a lot less than the recipe calls for. So this is three quarters of a cup of agave, and I just wash my hands a minute ago. So. Like that, and then this is Kangen water also, and I like the nine and a half because it's got a really nice structure. You guys know about Kangen water, yeah, right? Oh, mm -hmm. all right. So Kangen water means it's a water that's been um, processed with electrolysis. So the ORP level is extremely negative. What's ORP? So ORP is the it's the um, oxidative index of a material, everything's got an ORP level. And if it's positive, then it causes oxidation or rust in your body. And if it's an antioxidant, it'll, then it'll either repair or protect against rust. Hmm. And I mean, we're, you know, we're primarily water. People are always asking me like, you know, what, um, what should I eat? And uh, you know, the first thing is you fix your water. That, that is the absolute first thing. So where do you get the uh, the special water from? Uh, it comes out of the machine. We'll go upstairs a minute. I'll show you what it comes out of. Mm. That's uh, that's one of my favorite uh, little gizmos. So next, I'm going to put in three tablespoons of tocos, and this gives a. Did you smell this? It's it's way nice. It's it's got kind of a malt flavor. Take a little sniffer here. There. Good stuff. So here's, here's a little trick. If you normally, if you put chocolate in this blender, it gets all caked on the sides. So I'm gonna blend this up first and it's gonna make a, 
a dome of foam so when you drop the chocolate in, the foam will keep it off the side of the blender. So take a take a smell of that. It smells like vanilla ice cream. Oh, wow. Is that cool? <laughs> smell that? Yes, take a smell. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, if you're making vanilla ice cream, that there's your base right there. It's just the best ever. And then if you put like a little bit of blue green algae, this uh, blue green algae we were talking about a minute ago, just maybe like a half a teaspoon per gallon, then that changes the freezing characteristics of the material so it'll freeze more like ice cream too instead of just coming out of a big block of, of uh, ice. So I'm using a half cup here so this is one and a half cups. See how the foam keeps it off the side there? Mm. Way, way slick. It took me a long time to figure this out. <laughs> After you make thousands of batches of chocolate. So uh, when I was putting the agave in there, I put uh, exactly three cups of water in with it. So after doing lots of experiments with different amounts, there's, this, there's a, just the perfect amount of liquid to have in here so that it blends and holds the material on the blades but doesn't splash it all up here where it never mixes. Hmm. And so the whole goal is to have all the material broken down as fine as possible. Hmm. Alright. See, that was quick. Now, let's see, my last little gizmo here. And I usually make this by the gallon because I'm way too lazy to come in and make it by the blender. So when I was blending, I did uh, 10 seconds for the tocos, counting off the seconds in my head, and then um, 30 seconds for the <clears throat> blending up the chocolate. So yeah, if you were, you know, if you were just kind of putting it in something and shaking it up. <laughs> <laughs> totally different experience. Yeah, dude, you can afford a blender, man. <laughs> I think you might even already have one. <laughs> oh, we like the Vitamixes. They're, they're, um, uh, there are a lot of really high-powered blenders, and I like the... The Blendtec is good, too. Yeah, the blend techs are good, and there's a particular frequency that they put out that bothers my ears, so I, <laughs> I tend to go with the Vitamix usually. You're adding extra water, is that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, so because I'm making a gallon at a time, so I'm just going to fill this up to the gallon mark here. Oh, okay. And then we'll have food for however long. So I usually drink a liter or two of this a day. That's another reason that people have less of an effect is they're just drinking too little. Oh, what's a liter? How much is a liter? This is a liter. A liter is a quart. I apologize. Okay. For those of you that <laughs> don't uh, have yet to system. understand the metric system, <laughs> a liter is basically a quart. Like a bottle of liquor. Oh, there you go. So, so, so just give us a shake here. So also because that ice is in there, it uh, gives uh, uh, a really interesting structure to the water and really bumps up the negative ORP portion of the water. So there you have it. All right now, Dave. So we're gonna have to take a, a film of uh, these guys and see. <laughs> Let's see. We'll find. We'll find out if we did. Uh, if we did good, right? <laughs>
Uh-uh-uh. Roll and take shots. <laughs> I was like, I was like, uh, you need a third glass. <laughs> Hello. Cameraman wants to see. You see my glass. <laughs> you guys can have all you like, too. So see, I put that, that little bit of ice in there is already uh, melted down, so it, you got instant chill chocolate bliss, too. Hmm. That's the other thing I did. I had mine as, like, room temperature. <laughs> yeah. So I think, go ahead and that chill would be a little bit better. Go ahead have and that. set yourselves up there. Make your, <laughs> pour your own, cut out your own lines. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm reading the video. <laughs> Is that better than yours was? Yeah. <laughs> I know it's like chunky and oh, no, man. Oh. kind of warm. And <laughs> oh, that's just wrong, man. <laughs> Salut. Salut. So am I going to be able oh. to drive home now? Oh, yeah. You like to <laughs> take some with you? No, am I going to be like too high to drive? Well, I mean, sometimes you have to, you got those loops on the floorboard, you got to tie your feet. You got to you got a seatbelt, right? You're driving with your seatbelt, so that'll, that'll keep you in your car. You'll get really good gas mileage, though, because it tends to pick your car up. Stop yeah. loading. Yeah, less, uh, less friction. So I choose to know how long is that uh, video on the timeline there? Uh, 11 minutes and 54 seconds. Yeah, so, okay, so 11 minutes, and I can probably do this in my sleep in five minutes, because I've done it so many times. Um, so that's, we'll say 10 minutes at the outside for two and a half gallons, so that's food for, I choose to know, however long it takes you to go through two and a half gallons. And it's serious food. So how much do you drink a day? A liter? I drink say? a liter to two liters. And then the... Yeah. Eat other stuff as well? Or? Yeah, usually once a day uh, when the sun's high, usually around 2 o'clock. The glass is empty. More? <laughs> sure. Ah, oh, that's the spirit. <laughs> yeah, if you guys like to take some with you and sip on it, it um, it's it's really nice driving food. It's much better than that beef jerky. <laughs> oh, dude, man. Why you, you, just, oh, you, you just you just outed Kevin, dude. Oh, man. That was really nice of you. Well, we didn't like it anyways. That was important. You used to work at Nitro. <laughs> no, man, you got to save those beasts. <laughs> My rule of thumb is really simple. I, I uh, avoid eating things with eyes or things that came from things with eyes. So, no meat, dairy, fish, fowl. You got to start them off slow, dude. <laughs> They're just drinking chocolate and you're getting to give up everything I like. <laughs> oh, uh, if you drink this for a while, was it easy for you to come up scale, David, when you were drinking this all day? Yeah. Wow. I mean, it's just. Yeah. Yeah, the thing about nutrition is our bodies will crave the best source Which of whatever we require. So if all we know, I mean, well, all we know is what we know. Right. We don't know what we don't know. We know what we know. And so if all we know is how to get, for example, fats from things like meat and dairy, well, we'll go for dairy. Or if the only way we can get um, uh, minerals is from uh, meat, then we'll go for minerals. Or iron, if that's, the, I mean, if that's the only place we can get it, then our bodies will say, well, that's all I know, then we better eat some of that. Where are the fats in this? Well, there's coconut and there's hemp. Mm -hmm. the, the big no. thing about that. <laughs> <He likes> that. <laughs> well, you know, you got to be careful. This will take you off your high, though, if you're smoking weed, because uh, hemp was classified by the cotton industry and the uh, paper industry back in 1944-ish, so they could get it outlawed because it was interfering with their income. Mm -hmm. It's not really, it, there's not even any vague relationship to cannabis. There's no THC9, detectable THC9 in hemp seeds. And in fact, it's really interesting that if you if you eat um, hemp seeds, and I'm talking about food hemp seeds, or what's normally called it's industrial hemp. Seeds, right? Yeah. So if you're if you're eating uh, hemp seeds, like if you eat a bunch of hemp seeds and then you smoke, 
or if you smoke and eat hemp seeds, the hemp seeds will actually bind to the THC and, and uh, neutralize it. So if you're trying to smoke and get high, you won't be able to if you eat the real stuff, the real hemp. Cool. All right.